choose our, our process window. Now, there are several, you hit the pull down menu right there on process window. You can see, if you scroll down, let us scroll down. Okay. There's default for, for wave and default for reflow. So we don't know when to define it yet, so let's go ahead and use the default for wave. Okay. Okay. So let's just choose that. Okay. All right. And then now let's choose our application. Right now we're do it's it's selected for wave solder, wave on. What does that mean? Well, if we're doing a wave on, that means we want to record what's happening in the wave. So in wave solder we can separate it into what we call two parts of the, the application, and that is the preheat side and the wave side, okay? And in this case, wave on, you would assume that means both. So it's, it's always gonna be preheat. You wanna see how much temperature we're putting into that board to make sure that it's hot enough to activate the flux and also get good topside fillet, right? So that solder will wick all the way up those barrels to the top side and get a nice good topside fillet solder joint. So that's one part in making sure the everything works in the preheat, but we also want to look at the wave solder side and make sure we're making good contact with that wave. So again, we've got even contact all across the board and a long enough contact to again, get that good top side fillet and get all those components wetted and soldered correctly. So is that what we want to do right now? We want to look at preheat and, yeah. and wave? Okay, so then let's leave it on uh, wave on. Okay. Okay, now here if you want to, the recommended default sample rate is four readings per second. If you guys have a specific sample rate that you use, well, let's just go ahead and stay with four. But if you do the pull down, you can see you've got a wide range okay. of sample rates to choose from. So let's just stay with four right now. Okay. And then we talked about the start trigger, about if you start the profile, it's only going to start recording when it passes that temperature. We also have two more triggers. And again, this is kind of... Click on that. Yes, sir. Built in behind the scenes, it's another uh, benefit that we give the operators, the customer, to ensure that that profile goes all the way through the process. So if we have a failure where a TC may come off or the board may fall off in the process or something like that, if we don't hit these triggers, it'll say this, this profile is invalid. It's kind of like a safety mechanism to let the process engineers know that that profile didn't go through the process the way we expected it to. It didn't go completely through the process as we anticipated. And it would throw up an alarm message and then basically label that profile a bad profile. And then we'd go in and analyze. A lot of customers call me and say, I got that bad profile thing. And I said, well, the profile's not lost. It actually automatically saves it to memory and you can export it, email it to me, and I can show you exactly what happened to avoid that. Sometimes it may, it may need to change those trigger levels or some, sometimes it could be a problem with the equipment itself, the process equipment itself, uh, introducing temperatures that we didn't expect that, that shouldn't be there that caused that profile to fail. That's why we have that safety mechanism. So I would recommend we just go ahead right now and stay with default. And again, if we see temperatures outside the norm, then we can go in and change those triggers to, to meet those needs. Okay. Equipment. So how many preheat zones do we have? Looks like we got two force convection zones. Yeah, well, we got top and bottom. So we got excellent. Yeah. So yeah, so and we don't really use the top. That's fine. So let's go ahead and call it two zones in because we're going to go. We're talking zones, top and bottom one, Correct. zone one, zone two, top and bottom. That's the way it's going to be configured. Okay. All right. Okay, and now we're going to have to get a tape measure out and measure the length of those zones. Make sure we get all the dimensions right. And I'll show you how to measure those. So, let's look real quick here. We want to obviously measure from start to the finish, but the gap in the middle, we want to measure to the middle of that gap. And we want to give half that gap to zone one and the other half that gap to zone two. Because when, when we lose that temperature, the software wants to know where that where that's at because it's gonna it's gonna do that prediction algorithm we talked before, and it doesn't want to see a dead zone. It wants to divide that up between because even though there's no actual force convection going on right there, that dead zone I call it that that gap between the two is influenced by those two different zones. If I turn this up, that gap's gonna heat up on this side, right? And so that's why we want to divide it down the middle and, and give that half of that. 
to the adjacent zones. Okay. All right, so then we're going to measure zone one from here to basically here, right down that middle. Uh, you got about 22, or 26 and a half. Okay. And then let's go down the middle to right about there. We've got about 25. Okay. Let's give it that. And that one goes uh, 26 and a half. 26.2. Yeah, watch out for that first keystroke. Oh. 26.5. There you go. And you said 25 even on that second one? Or? Okay. And then this right here is letting us know the capability of those free zones. How low can we set them and how high can we set them? So what's the lowest setting that the oven control will let you do? This one got I don't think it has limits on it, but what was what would be the lowest you would ever set it? 100 degrees, 50 uh, degrees, 70? This, 199. I don't go, I don't usually go no lower than 199 on the. Okay, because right now it's set for 150. So, uh, yeah, so we can we can raise that up to like 190 just to give yourself some wiggle room. Okay. And then you know what's the highest that thing can go to, or what's the highest you'd ever set it? 500, 400. Uh, this one. Uh, 600 okay. usually. So we can set them at 600 and you can leave them the way they are. I mean, that's pretty close. We can okay. just leave that way leave it is. Leave that, okay. All right, so then the next critical measurement we gotta make, distance, end of last preheat, to the main wave. So do we have a chip wave and a main wave, or a smooth yeah. wave? Okay. So basically, yeah, from right here, to wherever that main the center of that main or the beginning of the main wave is. The center? No, I'm sorry, the beginning of the, At the main end. Wave. Right. Where is it? All right, the chip wave, hold on a minute. Yeah. The chip wave's right here. And then the main wave. Main wave right there. Right there. Okay. It's at the beginning of the main wave. Here. About twelve inches. Okay. Now. Okay, solder pot temperature. Where we usually got it set at 250 or no more than that now. It's 515, three. I think. Yeah, 515. All right, let's go ahead and put that in. Okay. And then what conveyor speed you're running at now? I think it's at three. No, 2.90. You're doing feet. The two. Feet per minute. Feet per minute. So remember we set the scale right there? Yeah. So let me convert that. We'll, we'll put it in in inches and we'll go back and convert the feet. So what was that? Conversion scale. Okay. All right. And this arrow forward now. So that, that's what it's now it's instructing us to put the TCs on the board and you guys know how to do that It's reminding you to put the ARTC on and, and where it needs to be. It's just a reminder You're gonna see it every time whether you, you know whether it's burned into your brain cells or not It's gonna keep showing you every time. So you just arrow forward if you got it done. You got it done. Just arrow forward Now this is important This is gonna say look it, we, we chose wave on right? So we got to make sure that we put those TCs, they're going to measure contact time on the wave. So they're going to measure dwell time and parallelism, right? How even it hit that wave. So the more accurate we put those TCs on the board, the more accurate our measurement's going to be. Okay. okay. And they're showing aluminum tape. You can go ahead and loop that will not contaminate your lead-free solder pot. So there's another method here. They're showing uh, lead-free or high temp uh, solder. You could even use that aluminum tape on the bottom side if you want to. It works. Um, doesn't work for a lot of passes, but it does work. Okay. And then again, like we talked about before, you can reinforce all that with Captain on the top side. Okay. So 
that's what we need to do when we get our profiling board ready for uh, for profiling. Okay. So let's arrow 40, and we'll go through that together. So we'll get a, an exercise, practical exercise. Okay. So now our wave TCs are on there, right, left and right, front edge of the board. So that's done. Let's arrow forward. And now we put the rest of our top side. You can even do bottom side if you want to. You don't have to stick to just top side. A lot of people just stop with top side. Some people do bottom side too. But basically it's indicating go ahead and put the rest of your component thermal couples on there. All right. And then we do that, arrow forward. And then we get to making sure that all of our TCs are serviceable uh, and reading the correct temperature. Now, if it's in red, that means we got a problem. And you can see right here it says open because there's no thermocouples attached to the hardware yet. All right. Um, and then these are mandatory. See how they're grayed out and already checked? So they're mandatory because we chose wave on. So we got to use at least the minimum of the three air TC and the two wave TCs are, are already chosen for us because we chose that application. Okay, and then the rest of them, we choose how many we want. That's why they're selectable. Okay, and then you've got, I don't know if you remember this, but you can check, click on that, and that'll give you down below. Give you, uh, should give you extra label. We'll check, go ahead and check one of those real quick. So you got two boxes now, one for the label, and then this one, so we'll go and check that real quick. Uncheck? Uh, uncheck number four real quick. So you see these boxes down here? Those aren't label boxes, those are distance boxes. So with reflow, it can automatically calculate that with a high degree of accuracy, where wave, it not so much. So we actually have to measure from the leading edge. And there's a little tool tip to help you right there. That question mark, click on that. It'll show you, put your tape measure down, measure from the leading edge. So the air TC is one inch from the leading edge. And then from there, measure the rest of your thermocouple locations. Okay. And again, we'll go through that when we set up our profile for you. All right. So you can go ahead and close that. Okay, so again, if you, you turn that TC number four on, you can give it a label, which component it is on the board, right, top or bottom, and then you also have to give it the distance from that air TC to its position, from leading edge okay. to okay. Its position. Okay? So, if it. we try to start a profile now, remember, if you've got red, there's something wrong, but if we try to start a profile, it's going to tell us we got an issue, and it'll give us a you know troubleshooting tip what to look for. So then we hit OK. We got to go back and correct whatever it is, and then try to start again. Again, a good indicator. If there's anything red on here, that's an issue. And the more you get familiar with this, you'll see right away. Oh yeah, I know what that is. You know, I gotta I gotta plug it in, or I gotta fix that. You know, to put a new TC on, or or batteries got too little charge and then I need to plug it back in for a couple more minutes or something like that. It'll, anything that's wrong will be in red on the screen. All right, and then you'll know, you know, again, after experience, you'll know what to do to correct it. And then when you correct it, it'll go black, and then you'll know it's time to start, hit the traffic light and start that profile. All right? So I think we're at a stopping point right now. We right. need to get that um, profile board ready. He's, get, he's getting started already, yeah, it looks well, like. Well, bar that cart down there.